Greetings, everyone. We hope that the series has been beneficial so far. We have received a lot of love from you guys, and we are extremely grateful. Before we start, in case you didn't know, we also have a Twitter page where we regularly discuss a wide variety of legal topics in a practical sense. We have put a link to our Twitter page in the video description. This week, we will be discussing your admission as an attorney. Seeding articles will be discussed in the next episode. If there is anything else pertaining to articles that you would like us to do an episode on, let us know in the comments below. We are looking at moving on to the next series after the release of episode 6, which will be seeding articles. If you are one of those candidates whose articles are coming to an end, well done, you're almost there. Like every aspect of articles, however, the procedure to be admitted as an attorney is not that simple. So, let's get into it. How do I get admitted as an attorney? Remember, to be admitted, the following requirements must be met. Candidates must have the requisite degree. They must serve under a contract of articles, also known as practical vocational training contract. They must complete the compulsory practical legal training, and they have to pass the four admission exams. Should your contract of articles be coming to an end and you have satisfied all the other requirements, you'll be in a position to begin the process of applying for admission as an attorney. Remember, this channel only focuses on attorneys and not advocates. Sorry about that. The Legal Practice Act, together with the rules and the regulations thereof, dictate the admission procedure. Previously, it was the Attorneys Act that did so. However, said act has been repealed. Firstly, Rule 17.1 states that a person seeking to be admitted to practice and be authorized to be enrolled as an attorney under the Act must apply to a High Court in terms of the provisions of Section 24, Subsection 2 of the Act and must simultaneously lodge an application in terms of Section 30, Subsection 1A and Section 30, Subsection B3 of the Act with the Council through the Provincial Council where the applicant intends to practice or in the case of a person who does not intend to practice where that person is ordinarily resident for the enrollment of his or her name on the role of attorneys or on the role of non-practicing attorneys as the case may be, which application shall be treated as an application subject to the condition that the applicant is duly admitted by the High Court and authorized to be enrolled as a legal practitioner in terms of Section 30 of the Act. Section 24, subsection 2 of the LPA states, the High Court must admit to practice and authorize to be enrolled as a legal practitioner, conveyancer or notary any person who, upon application, satisfies the court that he or she is a, a duly qualified person as set out in Section 26, b, is a South African citizen or permanent resident in the Republic, c, is a fit and proper person to be so admitted, and d, has served a copy of the application on the Council containing the information as determined in the rules within the time period determined in the rules. Section 30, subsection 1a states that a person duly admitted by the High Court and authorized to be enrolled to practice as a legal practitioner must apply to the Council in the manner determined in the rules for the enrollment of his or her name on the roll. Section 30, subsection 1b3 states the application referred to in paragraph a must be submitted to the Council in the manner determined in the rules through the Provincial Council where the legal practitioner intends to practice. Take note, a link to the enrollment form has been placed in the video description below. Section 26, subsection 1 of the LPA states that, just note that this is paraphrased, a person qualifies to be admitted and enrolled as a legal practitioner if that person has a satisfied all the requirements for the LLB degree obtained at any university registered in the Republic after pursuing for that degree a course of study of not less than four years or a course of study of not less than five years if the LLB degree is preceded by a bachelor's degree other than the LLB degree as determined in the rules of the university in question and approved by the council or subject to section 24 subsection 2b satisfied all the requirements for a law degree obtained in a foreign country which is equivalent to the LLB degree and recognized by the South African Qualifications Authority established by the National Qualifications Framework Act and 
undergone all the practical vocational training requirements as a candidate legal practitioner prescribed by the Minister, including community service as contemplated in Section 29, and a legal practice management training course for candidate legal practitioners who intend to practice as attorneys referred to in Section 34, subsection 2b, and passed a competency-based examination or assessment for candidate legal practitioners as may be determined in the rules. We would advise that you begin drafting your admission application and compiling the relevant annexures in advance, as you don't want to delay being admitted as an attorney due to error on your part. In other words, don't wait until you've served your entire period of articles before you start drafting. Note, however, that you may only depose the founding affidavit once the articles period you were obliged to serve has been served. A link to the Legal Practice Act, its rules and its regulations can be found in the video description below. Okay, enough of the boring stuff, let's get into it. What must be included in my admission application? Your admission application will consist of the application itself, the founding affidavit, as well as the annexures there too. There are many. We'll start with the application itself, which you should know by now is a notice of motion. The notice of motion, it must be bought on an ex parte basis. On the face of the notice, underneath applicants, but above the tram lines, insert for his slash her, obviously delete whichever is not applicable, admission and enrollment as a legal practitioner of the High Court of South Africa. The prayers that the applicant be admitted as a legal practitioner of the High Court of South Africa and that the above honorable court authorize that the applicant be enrolled as a legal practitioner on the roll that is kept by the council in accordance with the provisions of section 24 read with section 30 of the Legal Practice Act 28 of 2014 as amended and further and or alternative relief as the above honorable court may deem fit. Very important to those candidates undergoing articles for a period different to the standard two years, you'll need to include a prayer for condemnation before the prayer for admission as an attorney. The two most common types of condemnation are condoning non-compliance with the period specified in a contract of service or contract of articles of clerkship that was entered into for a period of two years and the applicant served only one year but also attended the full-time practical legal training course for an uninterrupted period of at least four months. Secondly, condoning non-compliance with the period specified in a contract that was entered into for a period of three slash five years. The applicant is at the time of the application still performing services in terms of the contract and recognizing the period served prior to obtaining the BPROC or LLB degree as regular service. As is the case with every application, you will reference the affidavits annexed. Both yourself and your principal will be deposing to affidavits. If you have previously seeded articles, your first principal will also depose to an affidavit. Although your admission application is done on an ex parte basis, it must be served on the LPC in terms of Rule 17. Service and other formalities of the admission application will be touched on later in this video. The reason why the above is mentioned here, in particular Rule 17.9, is because under the address of the LPC on the Notice of Motion, you'll insert the following to be formally acknowledged by the LPC. I acknowledge receipt of a copy of this application together with copies of all supporting affidavits and all annexures thereto. I confirm that the prescribed fee in terms of Rule 2.4 of the South African Legal Practice Council rules has been paid and I certify that proper notice of this application has been received in accordance with Rule 17 of the aforesaid rules. A link to a Google Drive folder containing a template for the notice of motion can be found in the description. Very important, it is just a rough template. The founding affidavit. As is the case with every notice of motion, there will be a founding affidavit attached to your application. According to Rule 17.2, an application for admission and enrollment in terms of Rule 17.1 must be in writing and must be accompanied by an affidavit by the applicant, setting out the following information supported where applicable by documentary evidence. Confirmation of jurisdiction of the court, his or her full names, date of birth, identity number and residential address. Confirmation that the applicant is a South African citizen 
or is a permanent resident of the Republic. Confirmation that the applicant has satisfied all the requirements for a degree referred to in Section 26, Subsection 1 of the Act after pursuing for that degree a course of study referred to in that section. A statement whether the applicant intends to be enrolled and to practice as an attorney or as an advocate or whether the applicant does not intend to practice. The physical address of his or her main office and of every branch office and of every building at and from which he or she practices and his postal address and telephone numbers, mobile telephone numbers, fax numbers, email addresses and other electronic communication contact particulars, if any. In the case of an attorney, whether he or she conducts practice for his or her own account, and if so, whether alone or in partnership, stating the full names of his or her partners, or as a member of a commercial juristic entity, stating the full names of his or her co-members, or as an employee. The name under which the firm of which he or she is a proprietor or a member or by which he or she is employed conducts practice. Confirmation that the applicant had no pecuniary interest in any law practice and that he or she held no other position than that of a candidate legal practitioner during the period of service under the contract of practical vocational training or supervision, or proof that the applicant had such pecuniary interest or held such other position with the prior written approval of the council. Confirmation that the applicant has undergone all the prescribed practical vocational training requirements as a candidate legal practitioner referred to in Section 26, Subsection 1C of the Act. Confirmation that the applicant has passed the competency-based examination or assessment for candidate legal practitioners referred to in Section 26, Subsection 1D. Take note, guys, that the original exam certificates will be handed to you on the day you uplift your application from the offices of the LPC for filing in the court file after the one-month inspection period. You must, however, make provision in your founding affidavit and index for an annexion number for the certificates that consist of four pages. Take note further that the admission exams may only be written after you have undergone practical vocational training for a continuous period of not less than six months. Confirmation that the applicant has complied with the requirements for community service, if applicable, where that community service is a component of practical vocational training by candidate legal practitioners pursuant to the provisions of Section 29 of the Act or proof that the applicant has been exempted from performing community service. Note that at the time of releasing this video, as far as we understand, no community service has been prescribed. If a period of more than one year has elapsed between the date of completion of the practical vocational training contract and the date of the application, a statement as to the activities of the applicant during that period. Confirmation that the applicant is a fit and proper person to be admitted, including a statement as to whether the applicant has any previous criminal convictions or has any criminal investigations pending, if there have been any proceedings as contemplated in the subrule, or if any such proceedings are pending, the applicant shall set out full details thereof. The applicant has been subjected to previous disciplinary proceedings by the council or any law society, university or employer, or whether any such disciplinary proceedings are pending. If there have been any proceedings as contemplated in the subrule, or if any such proceedings are pending, the applicant shall set out full details thereof. The estate of the applicant has been sequestrated provisionally or finally, or whether there is any application for the sequestration of his or her estate which is pending. Where the estate of the applicant has been sequestrated, the applicant must state whether or not he or she has been rehabilitated. Confirmation that the originals of all attachments to the affidavit will be made available to the court on the date of the hearing of the application. Rule 17.3 provides that a person seeking to be admitted to practice and to be authorized to be enrolled as an attorney must include in the affidavit in support of the application in addition to any other information to be provided in terms of this rule. Confirmation that the applicant has served under a practical vocational training contract, stating the dates of filing and registration of that contract, and the period served by the applicant under that contract. Confirmation by the applicant that his or her principal was entitled to enter into the contract of practical vocational training. Confirmation by the applicant that service under the contract of practical vocational training was performed under the direct supervision of the principal or of another attorney in the firm of the principal. 
Confirmation that the applicant was not absent for more than 30 working days during any one year of service under the contract of practical vocational training. Confirmation by the applicant of the exact dates served under the practical vocational training contract. A statement as to the type of legal experience gained by the applicant while serving under the contract of practical vocational training. Rule 17.6 provides that copies of the following documents must be attached to the founding affidavit of the applicant and must be certified as being true copies of the originals by a notary public or by a commission of oaths. Identity document of the applicant. Where the surname of the applicant does not correspond with the applicant's name in the application or with any other documents attached to the application, a marriage certificate or other proof to reflect the reason for the discrepancy. Degree certificate or certificates of the applicant. The relevant practical vocational training contract. Written confirmation from the council confirming that the contract of practical vocational training has been registered with the council. Where applicable, an agreement relating to the session of the contract of practical vocational training and written confirmation from the council that the session of the contract has been registered. Attendance report issued in respect of attendance of the applicant at a practical legal training course approved by the council. Rule 17.4 states that an applicant for admission to practice and to be authorized to be enrolled as an attorney shall attach to his or her application a supporting affidavit by the applicant's principle containing the following information. Confirmation of the exact dates that the applicant served under his or her supervision or that of another attorney in terms of the contract of practical vocational training. A statement that he or she has been practicing as an attorney for his or her own account or as a partner in a firm of attorneys or as a member of a professional company continuously for three years or for a period of three years in the aggregate during the preceding four years, or has practiced as a professional assistant in a firm for a period of five years within the preceding six years, or has practiced as a professional assistant in a firm for a period of two years in the preceding five years, and has practiced as an attorney for his or her own account, or as a partner in a firm, or as a member of a professional company continuously for two years or for periods of two years in the aggregate during the preceding four years at the date of commencement of the contract of practical vocational training. Where the applicant has undergone practical vocational training with a law clinic or with Legal Aid South Africa or with another entity accredited by the council to provide practical vocational training, that his or her principal is or at all relevant times was in the full-time employment of the law clinic or of Legal Aid South Africa or with such other entity and has practiced as an attorney or advocate as the case may be continuously for three years or for periods of three years in the aggregate during the preceding four years prior to the date of commencement of the practical vocational training contract. Where the applicant has undergone practical vocational training with the state attorney, that his or her principal has practiced the profession of an attorney as the state attorney, deputy state attorney, senior assistant state attorney or assistant state attorney in the office of the state attorney or any branch thereof continuously for four years at the date of commencement of the practical vocational training contract. That he or she has continued to practice as aforesaid during the period of the contract of practical vocational training. That he or she was at no time during the course of the contract of the practical vocational training in question a principal to more than three candidate attorneys or where the principal was employed at a law clinic or at Legal Aid South Africa, that he or she was at no time during the course of the contract of the practical vocational training in question a principal to more than six candidate attorneys. Confirmation that in his or her view, the applicant is a fit and proper person to be admitted and enrolled as an attorney. Please note that your principal or principals may only sign the supporting affidavit once the period you are obliged to serve has been served. In addition to the notice of motion template, we have also placed in the Google Drive folder a template of the founding affidavit and principal supporting affidavit. Reminder, do not just rely on the templates. Make sure everything mentioned in the Legal Practice Act, its rules and its regulations are complied with. Will my founding affidavit differ if I cede my articles? Yes, your founding affidavit will differ slightly where you ceded articles. Firstly, both your first principal and your current principal will need to depose to supporting affidavits. 
You'll need to add an additional subheading in your filing affidavit, for example, seeding of articles. Thereunder, you must state the following. The date you seeded articles, the firm to which you seeded articles, your new principal's name, the full details of the new firm, including inter alia, its physical address for each branch, if there's more than one, as well as the contact details therefore. The date on which the session of articles contract was lodged with the LPC, Confirmation that the session of articles contract was registered within two months of termination of the original articles contract. Confirmation that your principal meets the criteria to take on a candidate legal practitioner as prescribed by the rules. The period under which you served your session contract. Confirmation that service with your principal was continuous and without interruption. Confirmation that you're not absent for more than 30 working days per year. Confirmation that you had no pecuniary interest in either firm. Additional annexures to your founding affidavit. The agreement relating to the session of contract of practical vocational training and written confirmation from the council that the session of the contract has been registered. A confirmatory slash supporting affidavit of your second, which is your current, principal. An example of an admission application where the candidate seeded articles is linked in the Google Drive folder. The same disclaimer applies. What is the procedure after drafting the admission application? Issuing the application and obtaining a date. Once you have drafted your admission application and compiled the necessary annexures, you'll need to issue the application. Take note that this can only be done after your period of articles has been completed. Once your admission application has been issued, you will need to obtain a date for hearing. Those looking to be admitted in the Johannesburg or Pretoria High Court, or any other court using case lines, you will need to apply for a date in accordance with the latest directives. Remember that your application has to lie with the LPC for one month, so make sure you give yourself enough time. In the video description, we have placed a link to the Gauteng Division's latest directives concerning admission. Follow these directives meticulously. Service of your admission application. Although your application will be heard on an ex parte basis, it has to be served on your provincial LPC office. Service usually needs to take place between 8 and 12.30, but this must be confirmed. Take note that you'll serve the application personally and not the sheriff. Before you serve your application on the LPC, you will need to do the following. Index and paginate the application. Make sufficient copies of the application. Pay the prescribed fee, which is 460 Rand, that included as of 2021. Simultaneously with service of your application, you must lodge the enrollment form with the LPC as well. Rule 17.7 to 17.9 states that the original and two copies of the application must lie for inspection with the council for a period of not less than one month. The application must be properly prepared and bound with an index. All pages of the application must be paginated at the top right-hand corner of every page and all attachments must be clearly marked when the application is served on the Council. The Council may require that the information referred to in this Rule 17 be submitted in a form to be determined by the Council. An application in terms of this Rule 17 must be accompanied by proof of payment of the fee payable in terms of Rule 2. Feedback from the LPC the LPC will either contact you and advise that amendments need to be made to your admission application or confirm that all is in order. If all is in order, you can collect your admission application and set it down for hearing on the allocated date. If amendments need to be made, same must be attended to ASAP so that the admission application can be returned to the LPC for confirmation that all is in order. Briefing Council Once your admission application is set down for hearing, you will need to brief counsel or an attorney with rights of appearance to move your admission on the allocated date. Take note that counsel usually does this without charge. What can I expect on the day my application is heard? When the Attorneys Act regulated admissions, the then Law Society would send admission guidelines. These guidelines are still mostly applicable today and include the following. Dress formal and conservative. Ensure the day before the hearing at the latest, 
but all the originals of the annexes to your application are all together and ready for you to take to court. Your counsel or attorney must inform the court that he or she has seen the originals of the annexes and that they correspond with the copies annexed to the papers before the court. Occasionally, the court may require the originals to be handed up for inspection. If your admission is in Johannesburg or Pretoria, it will very likely take place virtually on MS Teams. Ensure you log on before 10. If your admission is taking place at court, arrive by no later than 9.15 on the day of hearing of the application in order to ensure that you have sufficient time to meet with your counsel or attorney and ascertain in which court your application will be heard. Each matter will then be called by the judge's secretary. You must remain seated. When it is your matter, your counsel or attorney will address the court and the judge or judges may raise queries and if not, order that you are admitted and that you may come forward to take the oath. If your admission is virtual, you will just turn your camera and mic on to take the oath. Once called forward, you will go to the front center of the bench to take the oath, not in the witness box, in front of the judge's secretary who will inquire as to whether you have any objection to taking of the oath. Say no. The oath will then be read out and you will thereafter be requested to raise your right hand and say, so help me God. For those being admitted online, you will just raise your hand on camera. Depending on the particular judge or judges, you may be congratulated immediately. Alternatively, you must stand aside to wait for all the applicants to first be admitted before being congratulated all at the same time. You may then take a seat on the benches on either the right side or the left side of the courtroom, and if there's no space or bench to be seated, line up standing against the wall. Once all the admissions on the roll have been called, the applicants will be requested to line up in front of the bench to be congratulated. You may thereafter leave the courtroom. For those online, you may be required to wait until everyone has been admitted, or you could potentially just have to excuse yourself and log off. The above is just a rough idea of what you can expect. Not every court will follow the same procedure. The court has granted my admission application. Now what? Section 30 subsection 1 and subsection 2 of the Legal Practice Act states that a person duly admitted by the High Court and authorized to be enrolled to practice as a legal practitioner must apply to the council in the manner determined in the rules for the enrollment of his or her name on the roll. The application referred to in paragraph A must be accompanied by the fee determined in the rules and indicate whether the applicant intends to practice as an attorney or an advocate and in the case of an advocate whether he or she intends practicing with or without a fidelity fund certificate and be submitted to the council in the manner determined in the rules through the provincial council where the legal practitioner intends to practice. The council must enroll the applicant as an attorney, advocate, notary or conveyancer as the case may be if he or she complies with the provisions of the Act. Section 30 subsection 5 states that the Registrar of the Division of the High Court which makes an order admitting and authorizing a person to practice and be enrolled as a legal practitioner must immediately after the making of that order forward a certified copy thereof to the council through the provincial council having jurisdiction. It is advisable to send the order to the council yourself as well. Once you've been enrolled, you'll be able to see your details on the role of practicing or non-practicing attorneys, whichever is applicable. Serving articles of clerkship during the transition from the Attorneys Act to the Legal Practice Act. There should be very few applicants still waiting admission who registered their contract of articles when the Attorneys Act was applicable. Should this be the case, you will need to make reference to both the Attorneys Act and the LPA in your papers. We will not go into depth here, but if you are one of those people, leave a comment and we will make a plan to get you a template. Conclusion Guys, once you're admitted, things get better. Work is possibly more stressful, but at the same time, it's more enjoyable. Next week, we'll chat about seating articles and the formalities in that regard. Thereafter, we are very likely done focusing on articles and will move into drafting, procedure, and so on. If there is any aspect of articles which you would like us to summarize that we haven't already, please leave a comment. Also, if you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. The more our channel expands, the more content we can bring. Much love. See you next time.